what's going on? Welcome into the show. This is the San Francisco 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. And coming up on the show, we want to show some love to all of our loyal real ones and subscribers. We want to open up the floor and take your questions here about the current state of the Niners, the NFL draft, free agency, and anything that you want to ask me because I got some answers. Let's talk some ball. Let's get it going with Big Bo who sends in a $2 super chat, and he brings up the subject of Javon Hargrave, who signed a four-year, $84 million contract in free agency about a year ago at this point. And when you pay a player that much money, you're expecting a little bit more than seven sacks, 44 combined tackles, eight TFLs, 14 quarterback kits. Now, Javon Hargrave was a pro bowler. And in 2022 with Philadelphia, he was not a pro bowler, even though he had a career-high 11 sacks. The issue with Hargrave, he's not good against the run, he's never really been good against the run, and he's entering his age 31 season. So that's a little bit of an issue. I did think that he played well in the Super Bowl. His pro football focus numbers were very solid. Overall grade of 73.9, a pass rush grade of 87.2. Elite numbers right there. 38 hurries, 52 total pressure, 7 hits. And PFF, they don't count half sacks, but they did give him the same totals as Pro Football Reference with 7 sacks right there. 23 stops, not bad. He just has to play a little bit better and be a little bit more consistent. Because that Giants game, I believe he had, he had multi-sacks there. He went on sack droughts, and again, when you're paid that much money, Hargrave, Nick Bosa making $34 million per season, the pressure is going to be on, and that's what comes with getting the bag. Brent Smith, Chase of the 49ers, going to trade up in the first round to draft an offensive lineman. I think there's a possibility they could. And you look at the top offensive line draft targets here, some are realistic, some are not. Olu Fashanu out of Penn State, I think he's going to go earlier. Joe Olt, I think is going to be the first offensive lineman taken in the draft. So you're not going to trade all the way inside the top 10. Can you trade into the teens for a player like J.C. Latham out of Alabama, Troy Fatano out of Washington, Talies Fuaga out of Oregon State? Those are three options that could be there. Graham Barton out of Duke is another player that you might not even need to trade up for. Amarius Mims, Tyler Guyton, they might fall to you at number 31. I think the Niners could be a little bit wheezy because of those latter players having a lack of experience. Graham Barton would be awesome. Any of those players that we just showed you would be great. If the Niners trade into the 20s, if they use some of those comp picks to trade into the teens, there could be some really good offensive linemen there available for the taking who could compete or take the job of Colton McKivitz at right tackle. Rafael Del Rio, $10 Super Chat. Love the show. Thank you, my brother. Keep up the great work. I will. I know it won't happen, but how about a Brandon IU trade to the Minnesota Vikings for Justin Jefferson? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it here. That is a fantasy type of trade. That is a Madden type of trade. And Rafael, I appreciate you asking the question. And here's what it comes down to for me. If the Niners trade Brandon Ayuk, it's because they don't want to pay him and don't have the money to pay him $25 million per year. If they don't have the money to pay Brandon Ayuk, they're not going to have the money to pay Justin Jefferson, who's been the better, more elite, and is going to be the more expensive player. There's shatter of Justin Jefferson asking for $30 million per year. That is way too rich. For the Niners liking. They simply will not pay that. They don't want to pay that. And if Ayuk is asking for that, I don't blame them for wanting to move on. So it's just not going to happen. BA to the Vikings for Justin Jefferson. If you want to get the better player, Jefferson is that guy. Even though I thought Ayuk this past year was a top 10 wide receiver, but Jefferson has been like a top number one, top number two, top number three. But for me, would you rather just have Ayuk? For a cheaper price, I probably would. Draco, you could choose one cornerback here. Terry on Arnold. Oh, you, so you're going different positions here. You could choose one of these players. Terry on Arnold, 
Amarius Mims, Burton, Chop Robinson, Brian Thomas. Who would you go with? For need for the Niners, of those players, I'm not even going to go need. Let's go best player available because I'm a BPA type of guy, best player available. If Terry on Arnold falls to you, I think he's the best player available. Brian Thomas is right up there with Terry on Arnold if we're talking best player available. So both of them are like neck and neck. Right after that for me, best player available is Chop Robinson. 250 pounds, fastest 10-yard shuttle, 4-5, 40-yard dash, fast get off. Him on this defensive line, I think he could be a stud. Models this game, he told me, after Nick Bosa, TJ Watt at the NFL scouting combine. So those are interesting options there. Mims is so inexperienced. And if you're talking Barton instead of Burton, which I think you're talking about, I love him because he's nasty, he's a masher, he's a mauler. I'd love if he fell to the Niners at number 31. Good options right there. Draco, thanks for making the gears work inside the brain. Jacob Martin, 49ers report by Chat Sports. What up? Who would you want at cornerback in free agency, Tredavious White or Xavier Howard? I'm going Tredavious White all the way. And I know he's coming off the torn Achilles. He's coming off the torn ACL. That really scares me because he hasn't played a lot over the last couple of years. But I do believe those are injuries you can come back from. I believe that White and Ward with Lenore in the slot, that is a very, very talented one, two, three punch at that cornerback spot. Xavier Howard, I've seen a little bit of a decline. He got a bag. I believe in 2019, he had 20 pass breakups and 10 picks. Just otherworldly type of production. He's just not that player any longer. Now, he doesn't have the injury issues that Trey White has, but I think Trey White is just the better player. And even when he's been injured and he's been on the field, the numbers are still pretty damn good. Brent Smith, Brandon Ayuk is probably asking, for $25, $25.7 million per year, which is reasonable. What say you? 25 mil, I'd pay him that. Why is that? Calvin Ridley got 23. Ayuk is a better wide receiver than Calvin Ridley. Younger, more durable, more productive, and overall just better. And then Debo Samuel's making 24 mil per year. And I think Brandon Ayuk is the better wide receiver as compared to Debo. Debo special, one-of-one one weapon, game-breaker, game-changer, can flip the field on its head and flip the game on its head. He's one of the only players in the NFL who can really just carry the team to a victory at a skill position with just a couple of plays. But Ayuk is the better wide receiver, and he has a point to be made when he goes to the negotiating table, I want to make more than Debo because I've been more productive than Debo the last two years. And we could take a look at the numbers between Ayuk and Debo the last two years as a wide receiver. And the thing with Debo, he's making that much money, but he's a hybrid player. And he's seventh as far as highest paid wide receiver. And he's been injured and the numbers have been down the last two years since being a 2021 all pro. I mean, look at these numbers. Ayuk has been the better wide receiver. Point blank period. You look at the numbers, more games played, more targets, more catches, more yards, better yards per catch. 49er Media, hey Chase, hope all is well. Would you bring back Quantrez Knight? He was released by the Niners. I saw my boy Brad SF Niners tweet that out. It was, uh, you know, an office meme, I think. And it was, we want you back. As a backup safety, as a guy who's aggressive, who is physical, who's not afraid to lay a hit down, Quantrez Knight is a good player. I was actually kind of bummed that the Cardinals poached him off the Niners practice squad last year. Um, Quantrez Knight can play as a backup safety. I think he has that dog. I always love the multiple wristbands on the biceps, something that Sean Taylor used to do back in the day. You see that? And I think wide receivers are like, ah, I'm scared a little bit. Ronaldo and 49ers goaded feelings on Brock Purdy. I'm very high on Brock Purdy. I've been high on Brock Purdy right from the jump. The receipts are certainly there. I said in his rookie year, you cannot cut this kid. If you cut him, he's not going to make it through waivers. He will not come back on the practice squad. My roster projection, I had him make him the team. And in the preseason as a rookie, thought he threw a touch, accuracy, anticipation. I like the processing. I like the athleticism. Obviously, all of those 
rang true, and he's ended up being, and he's turned into a better player than I thought he was going to be. Stud. I think his work ethic is awesome. I think he is a good pairing alongside Kyle Shanahan. He took Patrick Mahomes to overtime in his first full season as a starter. The arrow is pointing up for the kid, and I think with that work ethic, with, he, with what he's shown me, I think he's going to continue to improve in the National Football League. If you're a diehard Niner fan, hit that sub button right now. We're the most interactive and the most informative, most consistent Niners channel on YouTube, short form, long form, but also we involve our subscribers more than any other YouTube channel out there with mailbags like this.